Welcome to the Let It Fly show inside the Let It Fly sports bar in downtown Omaha in the Capital District. I am Michael Severe. My partner, Josh Jones, right now as we're taping, is in the delivery room. He is not having a baby. His wife is having a baby, and so he is out this week. We wish him the best. I believe I'm not mistaken, it's a little girl because they already have a little boy. And so they're having a little girl, which is pretty awesome. This is also brought to you by our presenting sponsor, that is Bud Light. Just like when you're hanging out at the Let It Fly Sports Bar, Bud Light brings you easy drinking and easy buckets throughout Nebraska. Easy to drink and easy to enjoy. We appreciate Bud Light for being our presenting sponsor of the show. Of course, if you're looking for an elevated, a little bit different kind of sports bar that's got great food, so many TVs and a great atmosphere. This is the place to go. And as we talked before, the food is outstanding. I have not had the French dip before. Um, first of all, the horseradish sauce. The kids say it's fire. Is it? Can I say it? it's fire? It's really good. The au jus is not too salty, which can be a problem sometimes with au jus. It's delicious. The baguette's nice as well. You've got the, I believe it's sirloin. Yep, beef sirloin, French baguette, au jus, and the horseradish mustard cream. I've just been dipping French fries in the horseradish mustard cream the whole time. It's outstanding. One of the great things on the many menus here at Let It Fly because you have the game day menu, which is a little more limited. You have a a weekend sometimes. You have the main menu. You have some brunch items. So just check out the website. Let it fly Omaha, and you will, uh, you'll see all that is there on the menu. This is a big show because it is the pink out week for Creighton basketball. Saturday against DePaul, the pink out game, you guys know what it is. It's sold out every year. It's an emotional, it is filled with energy throughout the uh, arena as well. It is an amazing event. So we're going to catch up with Ryan Baburek, who is from Infusion Brewing uh, in Crescent Moon, because they have those pink cans for Let It Fly Lager that you can get at the game this year. Uh, last year, we tried to get them in there. It was last minute. Couldn't get it done. But at the game, they'll have those, the pink versions of them. You can get them at the bar as well, and you can get them at some other places. We'll talk to Ryan coming up a little bit later. The Jays' big man, Ryan Kalkbrenner, coming off of two really good games. Two games ago, 54 minutes against Seton Hall in triple overtime, led the team in scoring, had a great game. We'll chat with him about that game and the whole season. And since Xavier, uh, just this couple of days ago, he had 16 against them as well. Uh, and then also, because it's the pink out, uh, and then the Hope Lodge, of course, is benefiting from this in the American Cancer Society. We're going to bring in someone who has survived cancer, cancer survivor. Sherry will join us. She's going to come on. Her name is um, Sherry French. She'll join us as well to talk more about you know being a survivor, what the pink out game means to her, um, what the community around Creighton means to her as well. She's also friends with the uh, Brad Freak, Freak and family. Um, Coach Feek, of course, passed away right before the New Year's. We'll chat with her about that as well. So many great things this weekend, though, at Let It Fly. Before we get to our guests and get through the big story of the week, this weekend, you got Saturday. You got Nebraska plays Maryland. It's a big road game for Maryland. I mean, for Nebraska, they got to win a, a road game. That's at 11 a.m. And then you have the pink out game, as we mentioned. Great men's basketball versus DePaul. That's at 6 p.m. It's going to be rocking in here, just like it'll be rocking over in um, CHI as well. And then Sunday, NFL Conference Championship games. The first game, because they alternate every year, and I'm sure TV would have rather this being the second game, but Kansas City at Baltimore, which is probably the more high-profile game, but it rotates every year. So the AFC Championship game, first at 2 o'clock. And then your nightcap is kind of a surprising, if you thought about the beginning of the season. But you got Detroit going to San Francisco, which should be a good matchup as well. And then also on Sunday, Creighton Women's Basketball plays Seton Hall at 1 p.m. Um, I'm guessing, I'm going to go with this, the number one seed seem like it makes the most sense. Baltimore versus San Francisco. You know, we've had this a couple times now where you have the bye week um, where the two top t- seeds get a bye. We've seen it advance before. Last year it happened, the top two seeds. So I think the top two seeds are going to advance the Super Bowl in Vegas as well. Imagine what it's going to be like in Vegas for the Super Bowl week. I just can't. I've been in New Orleans for it. I've been in Dallas for it. been a couple of places when this is happening. I cannot imagine what it's going to be like in the city of Las Vegas. I mean, there's so much going on already. And then you also have the Super Bowl going on as well. It's going to be crazy. Uh, local headlines before we get to our guest. You, you got to stick with the two big programs in the state, Nebraska and Creighton, both playing well, both 15-5 and five on the season. Uh, Creighton 6-3 and three in the Big East. Nebraska's 5-4 and four in the Big Ten. But if you look at their team, the two teams, Creighton has the 12th most quad one wins 
right now in college basketball with three. They're three and three in the quad one. They're two and two in quadrant two, and then four and zero and six and zero in quadrant quad three and four. They're fifteenth in Ken Palm. Nebraska Creighton has what's left the twenty fourth hardest schedule. You know how good the Big East is. Twenty fourth hardest schedule remaining. They have ten games on the schedule with eight contests coming versus versus teams who are five hundred and above. Nine games against teams that have a worse record than Creighton's. And they also have, of those 10 games remaining on the schedule, two of the games right now against teams ranked in the AP Top 25. That is their tournament resume right now. As for Nebraska's tournament resume, 2-2, two and two, quad 1, 4-2 and two in quad 2. So at 6-4 and four in 1-2 and two quads, that's really good. That is tournament material. Then 3-1 and one in quadrant 3 and 6-0 and oh in quadrant 4. And they are 45th in Kimpom right now. The difference between Creighton's schedule and Nebraska's schedule remaining is big. I mentioned where Creighton was. Nebraska has the 75th hardest schedule remaining, so it's good for Nebraska fans. Uh, They have 11 games remaining, including that one against Maryland I mentioned this weekend. 10 versus teams with worse records and 8 against teams with records north of 500. And in Nebraska's remaining schedule, again, only two games right now versus teams ranked currently in the top 25. As for the bracket matrix, which kind of goes through and looks at all the different mock brackets, Creighton has an average seed of 3.91, so just below a 4 seed, and Nebraska's 9.81, just below a 10 seed for that. So it is, it could be a time, and we've had this before, where you see Nebraska in there, you see Creighton at the same time, and maybe, at least for Nebraska, they could be a couple blocks from here in Omaha playing. Certainly a possibility. You see a lot of brackets mocking them there, mocking them to Omaha, so it certainly could happen there. And we know where Creighton might be. Uh, And Kansas might be here as well. So you could have Nebraska and and Kansas over at CHI. You think about the tickets because the season ticket holders for Creighton basketball, they are allowed to get tickets for that tournament, and they could also sell them, right, to Nebraska fans or Kansas fans as well. The big news from... Nebraska football, not a lot going on with them right now, but the spring game, the time and date are out. We already had the date already. It's as late as it can possibly really be. Really be. It is uh, April 27th. That's Saturday at 11 a.m. Normally, it's about 1 p.m., but according to uh, the AD, Trav, Al- Trav Alberts, he said that the reason why they're doing it earlier is because they have softball and baseball going on in Lincoln as well. So the hope is that they can... You know, you go to the football game, you stay there a couple hours, you go check out Nebraska softball, you go check out Nebraska baseball all on the same day, which is kind of cool as well. Tickets for pre-sale go on February 6th for the season ticket holders and then February 7th for the general public. So the next day, 15 bucks for the tickets this year. Uh, I believe club seats may be a little more expensive. Um, it's still free for student athletes, I mean for students at Nebraska to get in as well. So it's a, it's, it's a good thing to do this. Go see the team. I'm sure it's going to be packed this year. Uh, everybody's going to want to see the, the young freshman quarterback who was there early. Um, so I'm sure it's going to be a big deal to check that out. Coming up on the Let It Fly show, we will get to our guests. We'll start by showing you and talking about well, we won't show you. We'll talk about it. Maybe we'll post a picture of it, of the pink cans for the Let It Fly lager when we come back here on the Let It Fly show. All right, more on, uh, obviously, Let It Fly. We talk a lot about the Pink Out game. We did it last year. We're doing it again this year. Ryan Babirik joining us again from Infusion Brewing uh, and also Crescent Moon as well. The special cans are back again this year. Yeah, we're super excited. We got them in the arena this year. Oh, Um, nice. So uh, be on the lookout. We also have about 1,000 koozies to give away. Um, I'm sure those will be gone before halftime, so make sure you get there quick. Talk about the idea behind it. Why did you guys decide to do this along with uh, the Pink Out? The Pink Out game is such a, a, a calendar circular, you know, for people each yeah. year. It's it's one of the uh, most attended Creighton games. And yep. anything that we can do to be a part of that and maybe put a little bit extra more pink in the arena, uh, we want to we want to do that. Yeah. And how does I know there was proceeds go to American Cancer Society's part, a portion of it. Yep. Yeah. We'll do some kickback to uh, the American Cancer Society mm-hmm. and then uh, the Hope Lodge as well. Talk to me about how you first got into beer. How'd you get into brewing? It was uh, strictly a family business, and uh, that's kind of where... Uh, you started it. 
My dad. Yep. Oh, that's so awesome. yeah, yeah, his name is Bill Babiric. Um, he started the Crescent Moon in 1996. Um, when I graduated high school, I kind of came in to the brewery, started doing some work there. Yeah. Um, and then it's just kind of evolved into this, and now we're uh, partnered up with Let It Fly, and we couldn't be more grateful. That's awesome. What is your favorite thing to eat at Crescent Moon? Oh, the Reuben. Gotta have the Reuben. Loves the Reuben. Gotta have the Reuben. Yeah. When the yep. Omaha World Herald did their Reuben prowl, probably 12 years ago. Yep. They had you guys as every year. Board. Every year yeah. they want to. We, you know, yeah. there, there's the people that'll try to imitate us. Yeah. But no yeah. one's, no one's beating us. The, the Blackstone Reuben on 36 in Farnham. Yeah. Yeah. I am a, uh, I'm a Rachel guy. Okay. I like the pastrami instead yep. of the corned beef. Yep. I like a little bit more of the, the pepper. Mm -hmm. That's my only thing I like better than that. So that's, that makes sense. Um, how has Omaha changed in you guys' time being in this business? Because when I, I know when I moved here in 02, there wasn't a lot of breweries. There wasn't a lot of craft beer places. It's grown so much. How's it been for you guys? Yeah, I mean, we, uh, we as in, my pops opened the uh, Crescent Moon in 1996. Right. And at the time, craft beer was pretty unheard of in the, uh, in the city of Omaha. Yeah. Um, so that kind of evolved. Uh, and it was always kind of a pipe dream of his to open up a brewery. Uh, and when we opened up a brewery, I think there was less than 15 breweries in the whole state of Nebraska. Right. And I think, uh, I, I don't quote me, but I think we're up close to the 50 number in the whole state now. So huge growth, um, economic growth oh, and yeah, uh, support in the industry in the last 10 years for sure. Tell me about what makes the Let It Fly Lager special. Uh, it's just an approachable beer. We, uh, we tried to get something that, uh, everyone could rally around, uh, almost your domestic style craft beer. Uh, we want people to support local. We don't want people to support the big name brands. Um, so yeah, we wanted to create a beer that everyone can kind of relate to. And, uh, even your average drinker can, can gravitate towards that beer. We had a beer growing up in New Orleans called the Mardi Gras beer. I mean, you could drink it from the morning to the nighttime. Is it an all day beer? Oh yeah, for sure. 4.3% yeah. alcohol. Per so yeah. Coming in right on your domestic style, yeah. on your ABV, so, yeah. Do you like the different flavor beers that they have out there? I saw one. I was at an event, and the guy had it, and it was, it was called a peanut butter stout. Yeah. Um, I, have, I don't eat peanut butter, but I'm assuming it's okay. Do you like those kinds of uh, beers? Yeah, and, and, and it's funny you say that's weird because that's probably one of the most common. Is it common? Okay. Yeah, okay, out okay, there okay, because, okay. I mean, yeah, you – you name it, and someone's probably put it in a beer. Sure. Um, so it can get pretty crazy, but I, I personally love all the sours, hazy IPAs, all that kind of stuff as well, too. But yeah. you got to try uh, you got to try a little bit of the oddball stuff here and there. I think that's almost like um, a different version of religion, the IPA people. Mm -hmm. Like, they have a different belief system almost when they get into that. They want what they want, yeah. you know? And, yeah, so I think there's people that have done some beers, uh, and we could have gone and made this super special, right. you know, out of the out of the world beer, but we wanted a beer that everyone could relate to. And the numbers speak for themselves here in, uh, in the restaurant anyways with it being the best-selling beer on tap. In terms of the pink can, Let It Fly Lager, where can you get it? You can get it at... Um, High V's and the uh, Wine, Beer, and Spirits and Wall the Walls. Wall the Wall, okay. Um, along with uh, Infusion Brewing Company, uh, Beertopia, uh, which is next to the Crescent Moon, mm -hmm. and then it'll be in the game as well. And because Let It Fly will have them. Have them as well. Yep. That's pretty awesome. Anything special coming up at Infusion or at the Crescent Moon? Anything uh, not really. Uh, Mardi Gras will Mardi be coming Gras, up not yep. too far away. Up, I mean, yep. you kind of triggered that in me yep. there. Uh, and then Winter Bean Fest, that's where we kind of do our flagship uh, vanilla bean, and we do some different variations oh. of that as well. So I'm a big vanilla bean ice cream guy. Is yep. that similar? <laughs> People will say it's vanilla bean ice cream in a glass. So. Really? Yep. Wow, that's pretty awesome. Well, we appreciate you guys doing this. It's awesome. Yeah. These cans are awesome. Thank and you, Michael. Like, obviously, the cause is awesome as well. Yep. Thanks, Ryan. Yep, thank you. All right, welcome back to the Let It Fly show. Of course, we've been talking about the Pink Out Game all show. Sherry French joining us now. She's a breast cancer survivor, 10 years, a little yes. more than 10 years now. Yep, almost 11. So 2013, I was diagnosed. Yeah. Yeah, it was a little bit of a crazy time. We were, I was 34 years old, so wow. no family history, just found a lump and um, found out I had breast cancer actually a couple days before we were supposed to go to the Missouri Valley tournament that year it was in 2013. So we still went. And then, um, actually I work, I'm a nurse practitioner at Midwest GI and I work with Mary Jo Murfield previously. So, mm -hmm. um, she introduced me to Teresa McDermott down in, um, St. Louis. And so, oh, wow. yeah. So then we got to know Greg and Teresa just a little bit and, um, yeah, but it was kind of a wild time. I have two daughters. They're five, they were five and two at the time. So they're 16 and 12 now, but, um, I had surgery, chemo, radiation, the whole nine yards. So 
you've become obviously I'm guessing an advocate for early testing and checking yourself out and that kind of thing. Can you talk a little bit about how important that is? Like you mentioned, 34 years old. I don't think most women think at, at age they need to start self exams, but you do. Yeah, absolutely. And I always tell people, always are curious, how did you find it? How did you find it? And the big thing is get screened when you're supposed to, but know your body. Know when right. something's changed. We all shower every day. You wash yourself. You know when things are different. Mm-hmm. And don't be afraid to take that to your provider to, you know, ask, is this something wrong? Can we need, do we need to do something further testing? Those sorts of things. Obviously, the money that's raised over this week is going to go to the American Cancer Society and the Arbor Lodge for people that are coming in town that have to see doctors. You obviously were in, t- you live in Gretna, yes. right? Mm-hmm. So you were there. Could you kind of explain how much time you spend at a hospital, how much time you are away from home when you're going through these kind of treatments? Yeah, so it's pretty time intensive. So I had surgery. I was in the hospital overnight, and then um, I had 20 weeks of chemo. So we went every week or every other week, depending upon the treatment. And Once then, a week? Uh, yeah, so the first 12 weeks, or excuse me, the, the first eight weeks was every other week, and the last 12 weeks were every week. So... Oh, wow. We were blessed that we live close so that, yeah. you know, it wasn't such a big deal. Um, but yeah, chemo was eight to noon every Friday, then on that last 12 weeks. And then um, I had 33 radiation treatments. So that was every single day, Monday through Friday for about 30 minutes. So um, the whole treatment, you know, that part was done in about six months. And then I had another several months of um, an IV therapy that I got. So it was about a year, 14 months before I was actually done with treatment. Wow. Living local was great, uh, but these people that come or drive from rural Nebraska, Western Iowa, like I think we're blessed to live in the metro where it's oh, yeah. easy. I mean, it's a pain to have to go somewhere every day, but you're not driving an hour, or two hours, or longer than that. So that was nice, and I have lots of family support, so that's helpful. Um, but for those people, the Hope Lodge is amazing, and you know, um, because how do you, how can you you know go back and forth driving? I mean, expenses, yeah. you know. It, you know, and time and you have to have a driver and those sorts of things. So, yeah, and I'm obviously you're not feeling very well. And so right. you're being, to be, able to, to be able to stay in a place that can get you to the hospital and get you back while you're doing, it's got to be beneficial. As well. Absolutely. I mean, cause sometimes you feel so poorly, you just want to go back and lay in your bed or lay in mm-hmm. a bed and you don't want to sit six hours in a car or whatever. So yeah, that's a wonderful place for patients and families. Sherry French joining us here. She is a uh, cancer survivor more than 10 years now. Let's talk a little bit about, you mentioned family. Mm-hmm. So there's a community I've, I've heard before that you, that you build. Obviously, your doctors are a part of it. Your friends are part of it. Coworkers. Can you kind of describe that a little bit, how that helps you get through this? Yeah. I mean, having the support of, I have wonderful family and friends, my husband, my kids, my parents live locally, so that's very helpful. But then you kind of, just like meeting Teresa McDermott, you kind of get in this club that nobody wants to be in. Yeah, but yeah. then once you speak with someone, you're like, oh, I had those feelings, or this is what I used for support. or um, And so, and then now, and when I kind of was going through it, I told myself I wanted to be an advocate or even someone just to rely on for patients that are going through this and really any type of cancer but it's there's some silver linings like you your empathy builds you appreciate days which sounds kind of cliche but you just appreciate more you know the little things when I was diagnosed my little was almost two and so then you kind of start to bargain with yourself you're like okay if I can make it to kindergarten we're doing good if I you know and then you start to get greedy you're like okay we're this far how about high school graduation how about weddings um but yeah we've I've been very fortunate to have that support but some people don't um but yeah it's uh but yeah I always say it's the club nobody wants to be in but then I've probably spoken to 15 or 20 other women whether it be my age or a little older or a little younger about you know this is how you kind of feel I understand um and and those feelings are normal and but yeah. nothing feels normal about it you want to wake up and be back to the day before you found out you had cancer yeah you know I, I know Facebook's not for everybody but there's all these support groups and my we had a child that had some genetic problems and so my wife got on a support page on Facebook and you never know how much you need to hear from other people who are going through the same thing you are absolutely because because your friends and family can be support but maybe right. they don't want to hear your fears or they don't understand your concerns of exactly right. what you're going through or the challenges so it's great to have those people that have been through it yeah obviously a big Creighton fan yes what is this uh what does the pink out mean to you so it's it's definitely the, our favorite game of the year. So we've been Creighton fans for a long time, and um, it definitely has a different meaning. Every year when everyone holds the cards up, we cry, or I cry because I'm a crier. But oh, yeah. um, 
just to see the amount of people that are affected, you know, is, is pretty unbelievable. And so um, we go every year as a family. And then this year is a little extra special because um, we're friends with Brad and Jenny Feakin. And so yeah. Brad Feakin is the basketball coach in Gretna who passed away yeah. on December 30th. And so we actually purchased the jer- a jersey for Brad this weekend. And so it's a little bit extra special this year, but every year is, is fun. And, you know, like last year was my official 10 year. This year will be 11 almost. So, but yeah, so it's, um, and it's just such a community and the support yeah. um, that this provides for those patients who are in families who maybe don't live locally or even if they do support that they need that they're not getting. Did you know Coach Heakin? Uh, yes. Yeah, so okay. um, my husband and I are friends with Brad and Jenny. And mm-hmm. so um, we are also good friends with Bill and Kelly Hurd. And so we have known the Feakins for probably 10 years or so. So um, we, Brad was one of a kind. He yeah. was uh, unique. Uh, like you just, unless you knew Brad, you couldn't understand. But right. um, we had um, been, you know, I spoke with he and his wife quite a bit through their cancer journey because as, as any of this, you worry about how your kids are going to respond. And, um, and so they've been wonderful and it's, um, but so that'll be kind of extra special this year. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, but you can see how it affects people but how communities and people rally around others yeah. um, to make them feel a little more comfortable. How much did you raise with the jersey? Um, I was trying to follow along We um, raised about $2,000. So we wow. only spent like nine fifty for the jersey, yeah. but then um, we just donate the rest to Brad and Jenny. They have a memorial account for their kids. Yeah. And we said we... Um, it would have, we got Sterling Knox's jersey. So the, the theme for Brad had always been four feet. So yeah. Sterling is four. And there are a few kids on the team like Baylor and then Isaac Trout, Josiah Dotzler. They probably all played either against Brad or, you know. Um, but so I think everybody knows how special Brad was. And um, and he just would think this is all ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. You know, he'd be like, come on, get on with it. What are we doing here? Yeah, it, it is. I was mentioning community earlier. Gretna is like that little small town where everybody knows everybody too and so they, the way they rallied around him was pretty incredible yeah it, w- it was pretty unbelievable you know they had those couple of one big fundraiser a couple summers ago and then that one in December so yeah it was great and you know the f- the family I think felt the support the yeah. funeral services were beautiful and um, and so yeah now we just rally around Jen and the kids and um, support them in any way we can and if you don't believe in whatever that night the way they won that basketball game is yes. still I was having a conversation about moments of the year. It's still early, but my goodness. Yeah, like incredible. you can't, you couldn't have drawn that yeah. up, right? Yeah, Landon, making a movie. Yes, right? Yeah. You know, there was that video out there and it's like, you can't, you get chills just watching the video. Yeah. But yeah, we were at the game and um, just to have sort of one of Brad's star pupils hit the game winning shot and, yeah. and just knowing how emotional it was for Bill and those kids. Um, and to just get out there and compete was, which is exactly what Brad would have wanted. Yeah, exactly. I know there was a debate on whether or not you know you play the game, but they they showed <laughs> you play absolutely the game. definitely yes. play the game. Your your daughter Taryn uh-huh. plays uh, Gretna East. Gretna East, yeah. Okay. They're and actually they- playing right now at Columbus. Oh no! Yes, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, and then my younger daughter is a seventh grader, and so she had a middle school game this afternoon. So okay. my husband's in Columbus with Taryn, but yes, yeah, so Divide Gretna and East, kind of. yes, yeah, yeah. right. So the new high school and yeah, how's that been? Because it's I mean I, I well I watched Elkhorn North win right away pretty yes. much but how's that been with the, at a new school you know we've actually been pretty fortunate because they moved freshman sophomore juniors so okay. this year for girls basketball particularly we have um, several really good athletes that are d1 soccer players so oh. um, we play a metro schedule but we'll be b for districts so we'll have a chance to play a sub-state game to get into state but yeah. the building is beautiful i mean it's an unbelievable place we tell our kids you're gonna think going to college is like a step down because <laughs> this beautiful right. building and yeah, yeah it's it's pretty amazing what kind of ball is your daughter? You're your older one. Uh, she is a shooter. Okay. Yeah. So a cra- she's a Creighton person. She, let yes, it fly. She's <laughs> definitely a let it fly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So she's uh she went to her first game when she was like two months old. So oh really? We, she's yeah. kind of it's kind of been ingrained in her. But yeah, she blood. likes to play and yeah, yeah. So it's pretty fun to to have them have a passion that that we appreciate as well. That's so awesome. yeah. Sherry, we appreciate you taking the time and coming in. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Welcome back to Let It Fly Show. We are joined by the big man from Creighton Blue Jays, yeah. Ryan Cockbrenner, coming off of two games ago. 54 minutes of play in triple overtime. Yeah. How did you feel the next day? Uh, a little tired, but, you know, just headed in and did a bunch of recovery stuff. Uh, practice was really, really light. But, uh, yeah, they, we did a really good job of doing as good, as best we could at uh, kind of helping the body get back to normal. But I was definitely tired after that one. What was the most overtime you ever played? Was that the most? Yeah, that was the most. Wow. Was there a point where you thought to yourself, because I was watching it with my son, who's 14, mm-hmm doesn't really know a lot about sports he's like when do they call it a tie and i go never, never. <laughs> it's gonna keep going did it ever feel like it was gonna ever end 
it kind of felt like it was gonna end at the each over at the end of each overtime because yeah. we you know, we kind of had the game at the end of the first and second overtimes, and they kind of had the game at the end of the third overtime, and yeah. obviously we came back. But uh, yeah, I wasn't expecting it to go to three overtimes for sure. I have seen a lot of physical basketball. Mm-hmm. I think that's the most physical I've seen in years in college. What was it like? Did you was it frustrating at all that they weren't necessarily calling everything? What was that feeling like? Uh, I think it's the biggies in general is just really physical, and that one was probably a little more than yeah. normal. But uh, you know, that's just how it is. You can't, even if you want to call on a certain play, you you can't let that bother you because the game's gonna keep going on. So you just have to keep moving and kind of adjust the physicality. And I'm assuming there is times where because of your size, they let them get away with a lot with you. How do how does a coach handle that? How do you handle it? Um, I usually just let Mac because <laughs> there's no in, in my head. There's no point in talking to the referees. I don't think that's gonna for me get me anywhere. I just let Mac do it. He knows the referees probably better than I do because they've been refing the Big East for so long. Yeah. And you know, I just let him do his thing. Ryan Cockburner joining us here on Let It Fly Show. So you got a couple new guys in the rotation, Stephen, mm-hmm. and then also Isaac Trout's and their new guys to the team. You have so many veterans. What's it like, kind of incorporating those guys, not just into the team, but like into the family? Yeah, I mean, as far as incorporating them in the family, it's really easy because Mac brings in a lot of guys who are, like, genuinely good dudes mm-hmm. on and off the court. So, you know, bringing in Steven and Isaac just fit the culture really well. And then on the basketball court, there's such high, high IQ basketball players. It's really easy. Like, yeah. yeah, obviously they're learning new concepts, and that's going to take them a minute and whatnot. But they catch on about as quick as you can, and then things just start flowing really easily. I don't want to use ultimates, but... To me, at least, Stephen Ashford's the nicest guy I ever met in my life. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Does he feel the same way? About yeah, he, him? he he is the nicest guy you ever <laughs> he met. Is, it's incredible. It's incredible. Like he like we were at the hotel when you guys were in Vegas, and I'm walking by, and he like came by and talked to me for a little while, and he's asked me about my kids, and so I was like, I met you once. <laughs> like just a nice dude. Yes, yeah, super nice and also super personable too. Like just remembers all those little things. Yeah. So he's awesome. He's and awesome. of course, he's married. Do you yeah. ask for any advice in terms of since you're going to be getting married? Sometimes, yeah, and it's just nice just to have another, like, guy on the team who's, obviously, he's ahead of me because he's yeah. already married, but who's in a similar situation as me, so it's been really nice having him on the team. And then I know he's a freshman, but Josiah's engaged too, right? <laughs> yeah. So do you guys ever talk about the setting up, getting stuff ready for me- weddings and stuff? Yeah, I talked to Joe a little bit about that because, you know, I thought I was a little crazy for getting engaged coming out of my junior year, and, yeah. you know, he's, he's gotten engaged before his freshman year, so. I know. Yeah, we've talked about that before. He asked, like, how wedding planning is going for us because, obviously, he's trying to figure out his own wedding. Sure. So we kind of help each other out in that way sometimes. Ryan Cockburner joining us here on Let It Fly Show. You guys go and play UConn, and obviously, as a team, you didn't play well. Mm-hmm. You're playing against a team that has a lot of skill. Mm-hmm. They only got the ball inside you a handful of times, it felt like. what Was, was that frustrating? What was that emotionally coming off of that game? Uh, I mean, as far as the touches, it was like, the game was really physical, and, you know, every game is going to be a little different. And if the touches don't come my way for a game, I'm not necessarily going to be upset about that. So, I mean, that stuff kind of doesn't bother me. I know as a team in a lot of other ways we didn't do so well. So that was more frustrating than not touching the ball because, you know, at the end of the day, as long as someone's putting the ball in the hole, we're sure. winning games. So, but, yeah, that just game as a whole was more frustrating than any specific point. Was there any comparison to, say, Colorado State or UNLV, the UConn game, because they were all where you guys kind of struggled offensively. Was, was there anything <coughs> commonality between those three that you can think of? We didn't shoot it well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, of we, had, we got open shots and then we missed them. And you know, that's going to be a big thing for us moving down the stretch that we've gotten better at as the year has gone on, like when we're missing our open oh. shots. You know, those are going to happen. But then how do we make up for that on the defensive end? How do we lock in just a little more to save us those extra points on defense because we're not getting them on, on offense? Of course, he got a little experience last year when you were out. Frederick King got a chance to play for those mm-hmm. games when you were down, and he you could see him mature. Well, mm-hmm. how, how has he done this season? What do you think about his game and the way it's come along when he's had to come in and relieve you? Yeah, I mean, he's a super talented player. He's always looking to get better, always listening in practice. So he's just going to keep growing and growing and getting better. Uh, obviously, this year he hasn't gotten a ton of chance to come in because I'm playing a lot of minutes right now. But yeah. he's going to have a game later this year where he just comes in and does some amazing things for us. Yeah, he had one earlier this year. I remember you mm-hmm. got in some foul trouble. He yep. came in. I think he was like six, five or six or something like that yeah. and had a bunch of points, so he has a chance to do that. When you guys went to the Bahamas, since he's from there, did he take you guys around? Did he show you anything? Did you get to hang with him at all? Uh, he's from like a little island oh, off the okay. island we were on, so 
we didn't get to go to his island, but I know he loved being home. It was yeah. actually happened to be his sister's birthday the day we got there. So oh, wow. he got to spend time with his family, which is awesome, on his sister's birthday. So, yeah, it was a great experience for him, even though we didn't get to see his home, which would have been awesome to see. Because you were in Nassau, uh, right? Yeah, I think so. And he was in, like, a little tiny island. Yeah. Uh, that makes sense. But that is kind of cool when you get to have a chance to go away, kind of bond. I know you've done it before. How does that help the team when you get a chance to go on one of those trips? Yeah, I mean, you just spend a lot of time with those guys. And, uh, I mean, as, as it goes, when you spend time with people, you get mm-hmm. to know them really well, you feel bonded to them, and that's exactly how it went for us. Um, <laughs> we did a little bit of everything, a lot of time spent outside in the pools, a lot of time spent inside in the hotels just hanging out. So it was a great trip. Was it you, you guys had a chance to go to the beach? Uh, yeah, although it was really hot when we were was there. Was it really? So yeah, yeah. more pool time than beach. but yeah, I think the beach is a little overrated. I mean, this, this, the sand gets everywhere. Yeah. This is me being old. The sand gets everywhere. You can't necessarily get cooled off. And then sometimes you get in the water, it's so rough, especially when out there in the ocean like that. Yeah, no, I agree. I think there's a time and place for a beach, but, you know, I'm, I'm more of a pool guy. I understand. I completely understand that. Let's talk a little bit about, because uh, right now it's really getting into those bracketologist guys, right? And they're mm-hmm. all projecting where you're going to be and where everybody's going to be. How much do you follow it? Do you pay attention at all to it? No, I have no idea Not what they're all. talking about. No. Yeah. Like, I think they have you guys between like a four and a five seed, three, four, five seed, somewhere in there. So yeah. does that does it matter at all to you, you think? Uh, I mean, not really to me. I mean, we were like a uh, six seed last year yep. and maybe yep. Elite Eight. It, yeah. At the end of the day, you're playing other really good teams, and it doesn't really matter what seed you, you are coming in the NCAA tournament because everyone's good. Remarkably, if you look at where you were at this point in Ken Palm last year and this year, it's almost identical. Does the season feel? I mean, obviously, you missed those games last year. That's different. Yeah. But in terms of the way you're playing, the way you're getting together, the way you're kind of incorporating everybody, does it feel the same? Uh, it feels uh, really similar. I mean, there was – obviously, like you said, I yeah. missed games, so there was a different little hiccup there. But it was, it's kind of the same that we're going through a learning curve. Last year, I missed games, and we had to adjust to that. This year, it's how do we win games when we're not making shots. But in both, way, in both seasons, we're both coming along now. We're kind of starting to hit our stride around this time. Do you think that Baylor is quicker this year because he cut his hair? <laughs> I'm serious. I, he looks, because he, his hair is shorter, he looks like he's a little bit slimmer. He's like he's getting around a little bit better. I think people overplay the headband and hair thing so much. He just he works hard and he put he yeah. he did a really good job of changing his body this summer and making sure he was in in best physical shape he could be. So yeah. I think it's his work more than the hair. <laughs> Talk a little bit about the strength and conditioning guys you got there because I've seen it. I've been covering the team for over twenty years now and I could see the change in you guys when you started changing how you were handling the strength and conditioning. Can you kind of get into that a little bit? Yeah, Jeremy, who's our strength and training guy, he's awesome. He's yeah. amazing at his job. And he does a really good job, especially for the guys that play a ton of minutes. As the year goes on, he changes the lifts to make sure, like, we're not overlifting. We're, mm. we're putting our bodies through enough in games. So we do stuff in the weight room that makes our bodies feel better rather than, you know, just going in there and trying to lift as much weight as possible. So he does such an amazing job. I came in here as a string bean my <laughs> freshman year, and now I got a little bit of muscle. So he, he's awesome. Coach said when we had him on, he goes, you couldn't get up and down the floor more than three or no. four times in a row. What, you played, obviously, in high school. Did, did, was it just a different game? What, like, kind of talk about coming in as a, as a freshman. What was it you had to get better at? Yeah, I mean. Physically-wise, I mean. A lot, of, a lot of things went into that. I mean, like, high school games, slower. Yeah. It was beginning of COVID, so, like, I couldn't get in and work out as much as I wanted to at home because mm-hmm. all the gyms were closed. Everywhere was closed. So I, it was kind of hit or miss on what I could do. And I didn't know what I was getting myself into either. Yeah. And then even, like, in the fall when we normally have all that team stuff, we, like, before real practice starts to prepare, we couldn't do it because of COVID. We could only do, like, uh, two- or three-person workouts. So it was mm-hmm. different. And, you know, I just didn't know what I was getting myself into. So we got going, and I was like, wow, this is fast, and I'm not in shape for it. But then after that, uh, my freshman year, I had the chance to play USA basketball, and I went to Jeremy, and I was like, let's get me in shape for this. So we spent a lot of time working on conditioning and strength, and and it really helped springboard me into my sophomore year and now being able to play, like, 35-plus minutes a night. 56, 54 the other day. 54, man. What was was your kind of – People call it a come to Jesus moment. What was the moment you realized, wow, this is college basketball like in a game against somebody? Um, I don't know if there was a specific moment. One game, though, like my freshman year when we played Kansas. Oh yeah, it was just like, <laughs> like that's one heck of a way to start your college career. Yeah, you don't yeah, get yeah. you don't get eased into it at all. You're going up against the, I think they were top five at the time. You just 
thrown out there and said, do your best. And I was like, it's kind of crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan Cockburn joining us here on the Let It Fly show. What does it mean to play in a pink out game? Oh, it's so much fun. It's such an awesome cause. And everyone in Omaha comes out to support it. It's such an awesome environment at the gym. And, you know, people love coming to that game. And it's so awesome to be able to play, play in that game and, you know, help raise money for such an amazing cause. There's always that moment during the game where everybody, you know, has that sheet up that somebody that was affected by cancer. Mm -hmm. What's that like sitting on the benches there, everybody standing around doing that? It's just so special. You can feel like a different vibe in the building because, you know, so many people have been affected by cancer. You can tell so many people care about it and want to help and want to, you know, just do whatever they can yeah. to help the cause. And it's, it's such it's so awesome. This is a little bit of a transition, but who's the guy on the team that keeps you guys light, keeps you having a good time? <laughs> I think everyone does it. We're a pretty laid-back group. Uh, There's not one joker that's more of a joker than the other. Farabello seems like to me all the time, but, but you know, that's just, maybe that's just what, the way he handles me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Bella is a joker. I think uh, Brock is another one. One of our redshirt freshmen, Price, yeah. yeah, he's <laughs> he says some crazy stuff sometimes. <laughs> yeah, well, he's he's from Memphis, right? Yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah, those people in Tennessee are a little nuts. <laughs> Don't worry about that. It's nothing to do with you. Um, let me talk a little bit about. Um, and I asked you this earlier, but when you, you so you get engaged, and now you're a player who's engaged. Is there a different feeling or responsibility you feel you have away from the court because of that? Like, has it changed you as a man? Uh, I think. Uh, I don't know. I think you, as you go through college, you just mature in general, and you know yeah. it kind of speeds it up when you're engaged because you kind of you're in a relationship, a serious relationship, obviously. Otherwise, you wouldn't be engaged. Sure. But uh, I don't know. You just feel a little more mature than before. So that's all. It's, it's got to help a little bit to have somebody who has played the game at a high level mm -hmm. that you can have a conversation with. Like if something goes wrong, you have a bad game that you can talk to. Yeah, it's really nice and. Uh, Rachel does a really good job of knowing when like I want to talk about basketball and talk it out or when yeah. we need to like just talk about something else but it is really nice when I do want to talk about basketball she actually knows what I'm saying I don't have to like dumb it down or anything like I can say it at very basketball like technical basketball stuff she knows what I'm talking about nice in terms of if you were going to make her a special meal what would you make her <laughs> what's the, what's the Ryan Cockburner speciality in the, uh, in the kitchen <laughs> I, I'm not that good in the kitchen, but... Oh There's nothing man. that you like to make? I mean, besides like a Hot Pocket or something like that. <laughs> Mac and cheese or something. Mac and cheese. <laughs> I mean, I could pull out something nice, but it'd be something I've never tried before. <laughs> <laughs> is there a hobby outside? I mean, you got school, you're engaged, you got basketball. Is, is there a hobby, something that you can do that you loosen up with? Uh, it's harder. I was, can't do this in Omaha during the winter, but I love to fish. I was actually looking at the weather app today, and it looks like... Next week, I might be able to go. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I love fishing. Rachel got me some great fishing gifts for my birthday and Christmas this winter. So I'm excited for that when the weather warms up. Have you been ice fishing yet? No, I haven't. Man, I, I you want gotta, to. Yeah, you got to do that. I really want to. It's just you're so busy during I basketball know, I know. seasons. I know. Yeah. But I, I will one day. And I don't think people, and they'll tell you, people have done it, how good the fish tastes. It's that cold water. I don't know what it is about it. I think <laughs> it builds up extra fat in the fish, but it's. Tastes good, man. Yeah, I got to try that someday. You got to get doing that, no doubt. Good luck on the rest of the season. Thank we you. We appreciate it. Thanks for taking the time. Yep, thank you. All right, we want to thank all our guests for joining us on this special Let It Fly pink out version of the show. Ryan from Infusion Brewery, we appreciate him joining us, talking more about the Let It Fly and the special pink can as well, the Let It Fly lager. Uh, cancer survivor Sherry French joined us and the big man from Creighton, Ryan Kalkbrenner as well. Special thanks to executive producer, who Phil McClain, who set all this up, getting everybody scheduled, of course. We appreciate him doing that. Val King Elvis, who is still eating the food that we had on the table earlier. It's good for him. It's delicious um, as he's kind of running the whole show. Uh, also, social media maven Meg came in, got some pictures of everybody. She'll post them up as well as we get ready to show. The show should post uh, usually up by 3 o'clock on Friday, so we'll put that stuff up on social media as well. Also, before we go, we want to special thanks to our presenting sponsor, but light again, reminder, whether you're here, at Let It Fly Sports Bar, you're at home, you're in your basement, wherever you are, it is a great beer to enjoy while you're having fun. It brings you easy drinking and easy buckets throughout Nebraska. Easy to drink and easy to jo enjoy. Bud Light, we appreciate them as our presenting sponsor of the show. Now, Josh isn't here to take us away, so I have to do it. So, for Michael Severe and Josh Jones, who is... In the process of his wife having a baby, you know how we do it. It's Let It Fly Show. <laughs>